Hello and welcome to the Next Gen Podcast, the fifth Q&A with H&A. My name is H for Harry. And I'm A for Annalise. Correct, in case you were ever confused. Just in case. Just in case. We thought we'd clarify. That's welcome right. back to you, because we thought last time you'd actually be... To me, yeah, yes. Yeah, we thought you'd be maybe predisposed. B- predisposed. Uh, preoccupied, perhaps. Pre- no, nah, or is it indisposed? Uh, I don't think it's either. No, nah, I think it's one. Predis- predispositioned. Otherwise disposed of. No. Dis- 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 okay, let's Google quickly. Yeah, all right. Um, uh, so We thought I would not be here for reasons... Predisposed. Reasons regarding our pending birth of the child. Okay, so predisposed means make liable or inclined to a specific attitude, action or conditions. That's not what that is. No. What about indisposed? Yeah, because you can be predisposed to a like a certain opinion. Yeah, yeah. Indisposed means slightly unwell. No, which I, is not. No, that's not what we thought I would be. So is it just disposed then? Is that what we're saying? You no, were, because you were that's, disposed. that's throwing out. That's that's like I'm um, disposing of that no, thing. No, it's actually I'm it's just... actually not. Disposed means inclined or willing. Let me just see more uh, more definitions. Dispose. Oh. Dispose means to get to, rid of something to and throw. throw something. This is dumb. Why is the English language so complex? I think we should use different words, and I Why think we should not? say, we you thought were, I would have had my baby by now. You were, you were, you were, it's actually hard to come up with new words. I was just trying to come up with a new word for what you were. You mm. were. I think I just had a Braxton Higgs contraction. <laughs> do, do you actually? Yeah, I do. Woo. Imagine if this Imagine if I went into labour. we just went into labour and it nah, was Nah, I think it's just a, I think it's just, Yeah. You did have a theory because today oh. is technically your first day of of, um, mat leave. of mat leave, and your theory was so many people have told me that on their first day of mat leave they went into labour because they finally relaxed, and you need to be relaxed when you go into labour. So we're one week away from due date Correct. at the time of recording. Correct. This. So this time next week is due date, which only five percent of babies are born on due date. On due date. So However, there is something to be said about first babies being born a bit late. There is something to be said for that. They take a bit more time. There is something to be said for that. So... But here we are, doing another Next Gen podcast (laughs) anyway. Uh, The fifth Q&A with H&A, and a massive welcome back to our Next Gen Nation members, our exclusive group of podcast community members who have registered online. We're going to be answering questions from the podcast community, uh, so that's going to be absolutely fantastic today. If you'd like to register, head to the website. You can do that for free. Do it now. Okay. Before we go any further, though, it is time for another Love Like Leave. Oh, okay, okay. I actually think this one is ready. probably the easiest one that we've done, I think, in terms of all of the Love Like Leaves. I, I think this one is probably going to be the easiest one to answer, but I'm going to give it to you anyway, and we're going to see what you okay. think. Love Like Leave. So if you're new to this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give three things you have to choose if you love it, if you like it, or if you'll leave it. And if you leave it, you're saying you're deleting it. It's just never, never, ever again. And today's topic for Love Like Leave is youth hangout food. Oh, I have been to innumerable, (laughs) innumerable youth hangouts and have had many, many different options. I'm ready for this. Lay it on me. Okay, here we go. Number one. I love a good youth hangout. Cold pizza. Okay, yep, yeah, all right. Like the cheap $5 Domino's. Cheap Domino's or cold Pizza, pizza. Hut. That's nice. your first option. Okay, Your all right. second option all right, all right. is hot dogs. But you know the hot dogs that are just like batch cooked in the, in like boiled? Bulk bought. Bulk, bulk bought, batch bulk boiled. Cook, yeah. You know, like mm. got a bit of a slimy texture to it. I do love it. a hot dog. Yeah, but. Is it hot? Uh, I'd say lukewarm. Lukewarm hot dog. Lukewarm, lukewarm batch on, hot dog. Edging on cockles. We cooked it before the service, naturally, so we can Ooh, serve them at the yeah. end. Um, and the last one is frozen cokes. Oh, okay. See, All right. a plot twist, because that's like, oh, it's maybe. It's not really a meal, but I suppose it's hangout food. Hangout food. Hangout food. Fair, yeah. fair, let's, fair, Let's fair, play fair, the category. Okay. Let's play the category. So Ooh. love like leave, cold Ooh. pizza bought during the service, hot dogs that were cooked batch, before yep. the service in a yep. bit sitting, uh, and in frozen cokes. Yeah, and maybe ooh, okay. It's okay. actually it's actually not as easy as you think. Nah, I think I okay. know mine, but yeah, okay, yeah. All right, so I'll go first. Yeah, of course, naturally. Okay, I will love cold pizza. Really? Do you know why? Because pizza's good any day of the week, any time of day. Hot, cold, happy days. 
Especially if it's been... Nah. Especially you, you if don't it's, actually think that. No, I, I do. I quite happily eat pizza for breakfast. Nah, but it's cold, it's cold though. Yeah, but like, we're not talking icy cold. We're talking like we bought it and it hasn't been touched, but... It's been sitting. It's been sitting, yeah. It's got that cardboard yeah, box. Yeah, but it, look, I'm completely. not saying it's my favourite food. I'm just saying it's no, the least, least saying of you three evils. love it. Three evils. You're saying you love it. <laughs> But you I have love, no other option. I love cold okay, cardboard pizza. The next pizza. one I would like would be the hot dogs. Crazy. Yeah, because um, this is they're crazy. right. They're okay. I like them. They're this is crazy. Substantial food. I'm just not a big frozen Coke fan. This is crazy because yeah. my love like leave is exactly the, the opposite. same. Yep, the, the same. same. I dislike frozen Cokes. Really? I think it's the most overhyped rubbish ever. Wow. That's such, so Wow, dramatic. I'm shook. Yeah, I thought I'm, you liked frozen Cokes. No, 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 no. I'm leaving frozen Cokes, 100% leaving frozen Cokes. Wow. I, I am, I'm liking hot dogs and I'm loving cold pizza. Yeah. But... But but you roasted me for loving cold. Pizza. Well, I was just trying to get you to say something different. I was trying oh, to. Oh yeah, just nah, put nah. A bit of pressure on. But I think, I think, I just pizza's can't. all good, man. I although this is the thing is it is a, it's a, I'm torn between the hot dog and the pizza. Why is that? I just think maybe maybe the hot dog is the go. Yeah, I think possibly because we used to do hot dogs a lot. Yeah, in the kids' uh, ministry, in we used kids to do men. that. And um, it wasn't that, it, they weren't actually that bad. No, nah, and they were for, hot, they, and they were hot. True, yeah, Because we dogs. did them in, yeah, yeah, yeah. we did I them in. I suppose if you go, it's cold, it's been sitting, like a, we cooked them at the start of the service. Yeah, warm, yeah, you're going to Look at hot dog that. mystery meat, you know, yeah. like, mm, not so sure. Maybe for the next Love Like Leave, we do the types of pizza that you Ooh. get at a, at a hangout. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, here we go. We're just going to do it right now because that wasn't <laughs> controversial at all. Hawaiian. Okay. Yep. Pepperoni. Yep. The all cheese one. Oh, okay. I would love pepperoni, like Hawaiian, leave cheese. No. Ooh. No, 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 no. I know that's controversial because everyone loves cheese pizza. I, I, I love Hawaiian though. I, lo- I will love the cheese pizza. Ooh. I will like the pepperoni. Pe- yeah, you and don't I'm like leaving one. Hawaiian. I'm just a big fan 100%, of pineapple on pizza. A hundred percent, you're wrong on that. Give, by the give way. me some pineapple on some pizza. No, I'm on, I'm on board. It's actually like I've seen it said that it's racist. It is not Italians. racist. I'm just, oh, I'm just, oh I'm just saying gosh. what I've heard. I'm not saying I agree. Oh my god! I'm just saying what I've heard. It's that's all I'm not. saying. Anyway, that's love like leave for this week. Let us know uh, what you would do in the comments Just on YouTube. Just out here eating my racist pizza. Or, <laughs> or you can send us a DM on social media as well. That is it for love like leave for this Q and A episode. Let's get into some questions. Are you okay? Do you need like a towel or a tissue? Should we have bought like a like a preacher's? Am sweat I switching? Towel? You look wow. You look like you. I reckon it must be pregnancy sweat. I Never was, mind. I just was thinking maybe also you're a bit in, intimidated by the love like leave there. Yeah, no, it's okay. Or by these brilliant questions we're about to receive from the Next Gen Nation. <laughs> in fact, we've already received these in the lead up to the podcast. Again, if you want to have your questions answered on the podcast, feel free to join the Next Gen Nation and you can ask your questions. These were done in an anonymous fashion, uh, so Ooh. we don't actually know who's asked these questions, but uh, we do know that they've been asked uh, in the closed circuit of the next generation. The first question here is what's the best advice for being in kids ministry? Ah, okay. So last Q and a, you mentioned kids ministry was more than just like children's ministry. Are we talking children's ministry in particular? Cause I got some advice for children's ministry. Yeah. Really good. Let's start with children's. Okay, great. Yeah. 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 Cool. Cause off the top of my head, the advice that I would always give people who are in children's ministry was to make sure that you've always got a good news story in your back pocket. Okay. Because when it comes to children, uh, so much of what you do in children's ministry is sowing seeds. Yes. And it is so significant and it's so, so important, but you don't always get to see immediate fruit, unlike some of our ministries where, you know, you might invite a young person along to a youth service and then they get saved that week. Um, Whereas with a kid, it's like lots of investment, lots of relationship. I mean, it isn't any kind of ministry, but, you know, kids ministry. So I always have a great good news story in my back pocket nice. to encourage myself, to encourage my team, and to remind myself why we're doing what we're doing. And so that would be my f- quick fire piece of advice for children's ministry. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah. 
Let's. I'll give one for children's, and then we can go into youth. Nice. Uh, after that, cool. Uh, I think my number one uh, for kids ministry or for children's ministry, sorry, is uh, I would say um, make kids ministry or children's ministry not just a stepping stone or a gateway Great. into the ministry. Very make good. it everything that you have to give. Give it your all. Totally. Because I think the reality is, is that. I think it is, like you said, it is really hard. Like children's ministry is is a hard ministry to it has be its in. Moments, it's hard hey. to find the testimonies. It's hard to find the wins. But I think part of the challenge is, is that we can so easily compare ourselves to the other ministries in the church. We can compare ourselves. And comparison, there, there is a healthy competition comparison you can do, <laughs> like where it's like, um, like Apple and Samsung, for example, comparing yeah, themselves nice. – to better themselves. Um, but where it's comparing ourselves to like tear each other down or to feel bad about our spots um, and, and, and feel like, Oh man, this is not really where I want to be. This is, this is not good. This, I'm not doing anything. God, this is, what is this? You know, I think that negative, the negativity is a byproduct of that comparison is a bad thing. So I think understanding that this is, this is my heart. I mean, Andy Kirk says it like this. He says, make kids ministry your heart and not your start. And I think Very like cool. uh, for children's ministry, and I think that has got to be the best piece of advice I've heard about it. Yeah. Um, and I think it's what made uh, made it doable for me for so many years was that actually when this becomes my heart, when I actually give my heart towards this, mm. I'm like, man, I want to do this for longer because I'm actually, I understand not the instant gratification win, but the long game win that uh, children's ministry is. Yeah, love that. One other note on comparison. I think the... I think the the best kind of comparison is comparing yourself to where you've come from. Nice. So I think like comparing myself as a, in children's ministry to the youth ministry across the room or whatever is actually not helpful because they're very, very, very different. And you can't actually say, oh, we've got 100 people in the kids' ministry and they've only got 50 because sure. the approach yeah. is so different, sure. right? And so um, comparing yourself among yourself – well, obviously, biblically, yeah, it's not wise. It totally does, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think the only good comparison is like, look how far we've come. Or, you know, mm. look, you know, look what where we were at last year and this year we've grown. Or this year we're dipping. Why is that? Let's look at that. Let's explore that, you know. Yeah, um, the Bible talks about um, I beat my body and make it my slave. Yeah, and yeah I, you love that scripture. At, well, but at, early on, I think I, I think I actually misunderstood what that scripture was. I right. thought, I thought that that was about beating myself to get myself to be better, like physically, wow. like let's jump on my own back and just push myself and drive. Oh yeah, that's not the heart of God. I, I think, I think there is a sense of like uh, a sense of we, we should be looking to do better and we should be growing and we should oh, be course. trying to. We should act. I think we've got to be careful not to throw the baby out with the bathwater on mm, that and go, mm, oh, well, mm. that's not God's heart. Um, like to 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 uh, push yourself. I think I think God's heart sure, would yeah. be to push us, but not to beat ourselves up. Yes, uh, that, that actually is in relation to more a, um, a, a, a like a track and field runner who um, I, I beat my body. I, 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 I do better than I did before. I try and beat my personal best. I push myself to be better. Yeah. And it's it's more of a sense of like, I, I, I know there's more in me. And so I'm going to find that more in me like an athlete yes. does rather than beating myself up. And often we beat ourselves up because we look at other people and because we look at other ministries wow, yeah. and we go, I'm not good enough. Oh, if I was good enough, I'd be preaching on that stage. That's just not true. If I was good enough, I would be asked to lead that thing. Or if our I, ministry would be bigger or it would totally. look like this. But yeah. that's, that's not how it works in ministry at mm. all. Like we have to pray like it's all on God and then work like it's on us. And I that, love that. That faith and works together, that's where we see miracles happen. And I think it's not about I'm going to do it all because it's all on me. It's like, nah, like it's it's a partnership with God here. And it's, yes. it's, it's God that builds his church. We steward it and we play our part. But God ultimately, he's going to make it grow. He's going to make it healthy. He's going to make it, um, he's going to make it, I think I said grow already, but like multiply like, multiply was the word I was looking for. And so, yeah, I think w when it comes to comparison, I think we've just got to be, we got to be careful on that. And also the way that we view ourselves and treat ourselves, you know? Oh, totally. We can, I think, especially in kids' ministry, but in any kind of ministry, the, the enemy will use discouragement to try and take you out. But especially in kids' ministry, because, like I said earlier, children's the, ministry, yeah. The children's ministry, the fruit isn't right necessarily there in front of you. And so discouragement can creep in pretty quick mm. when you've had a chaotic Sunday or you've had, you know, a difficult situation that you've had to deal with and maybe it didn't go as well as you'd hoped. Discouragement can keep 
creep in really quick. And so you cannot afford to be someone who gets in the habit of beating themselves no, up no, when no, things no. like that happen. That's why the good news story in the back pocket's always awesome. That's why encouragement is actually spiritual yeah, warfare it is. Yeah, 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 it in is. young people ministry. Totally, totally. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's great. I think sometimes you know, like when I when I do these team trainings and I've got youth and and, and kids teams uh, uh, together, like the kids ministries being youth and youth and children's. Um, I think sometimes youth go, why do why do they think it's so much better here? This is hard. This is not awesome. And I think one of the one of the deceptions I think of kids ministry is that oh everybody's just loving what they're doing and I'm not loving what I'm doing. Wow. But I think actually it's like the people who love what they're doing love who they're doing it for. Yes. Yeah, I love that. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like I'm doing this, but I understand both for God and for people, this is actually making a difference for the kingdom and for God's kids. And I think where we lose that is where we do start to go, yeah, just like if I was over there, it would be so much better. Is that grass, is the grass greener over there or is it just greener where you Mm, choose to water mm, it? And mm. I think the reality is, is like, yeah, actually – Flip, man, life is hard. Ministry in every form is hard. It's yeah. it's not actually a, a, a clean cut uh, one, two, three equals like four. Like it doesn't it doesn't necessarily cascade like that. Sure, there are systems and structures you can put in place, and there are things that make it easier in a way. But yeah. really, what we're doing here, like in ministry, both for children's um kids and youth it's it is really sorry children's youth and young adults it is really hard and i think because it's spiritual warfare yeah it's not just the you're, physical you're not just working at mcdonald's <clears throat> making burgers like it's which, like hey, is a noble pursuit if that is what you do i mean sure um but like but the reality is is like actually no nah, this is like this has the added complexity of the spiritual mm. component and mm. discouragement is a spiritual thing it's it's a it's a it is it's something that we have to be mindful of and war against in in the spirit uh, as well so i think yeah i think it's really i think it's really good and i think for for kids and i think to to be honest yeah for the kids ministries for children's and youth i do think like this is actually one of those ones that's like we actually just have to settle it in our hearts that the ministry itself is actually just not about us. So oh. why, why are we even comparing in the first place? There you go. You've landed it. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, why do we even care what the other people are doing? Because mm. all that that is is triggering a pride re- response in us going, well, I should be doing that. Or an insecurity response saying, sure. why aren't I doing that? You know? But I think that's pride too. Why yeah. aren't I doing it? Pride makes it all about us. I think insecurity is a form of of pride yeah. um, that we have to just be careful of on both sides. So yeah, I, I'm not saying that it's like, this should be easy. Everybody should be doing this. I'm saying like, we have to guard our hearts against this stuff Definitely. and just be aware of it. Because I think in both the children's ministry and the youth ministry um, and in all forms of ministry, to be fair, I think just, just because someone's doing something more public doesn't mean that it's easier. And I think we have to be aware of that too. Like totally, you know, Totally. Um, I'll say one last thing and then maybe we can go yeah, into yeah. the next no, question. Next question sure. um, we talked a lot about youth ministry versus children's ministry. And I think the best thing that you can do is encourage the socks off the other ministry. Yeah. So if you're in children's ministry, go and be the youth pastor's greatest encourager. And if you're in it's youth great. ministry, go and be the children's team's greatest encourager because you are one team. Yeah. And if you're in children's ministry, every child that you're sowing into the youth ministry is obviously seeds, right? And totally, so you want to be totally. working as one team. So yeah. that's what I would say there's no comparison just encouragement we're living and loving it and that's where I I love that I love that as a as a finishing thought I love that because I think if we can work better as an intergenerational ministry and if we can work better together as kids youth and young adults on the same team pulling in the same direction that's going to get rid of the comparison and the and the and the competition um, competition between each other because it's better we're better together we're stronger together okay second question uh when choosing a church to serve in what are you looking for to to, when choosing a church to serve in what are you looking for oh okay this is a great question there's a lot of things we could talk about in this um the first thing i'm going to say is that i really do believe that god places us in a house Mm. um and so you want to be able to be sensitive to where god is leading sometimes god will kind of go yeah take your pick and he'll be leading your steps or guiding your steps but i do think um that's something to be very aware of when you're looking at choosing a church and the other thing i would say is that this question says choosing a church to serve in 
Make sure that you're serving in the church that you are planted in. Sure. So don't be going to a church and then serving in a different church because that's actually a really difficult kind of, you know, you're not really, you're not actually engaging in the community that you're building. Mm. Um, and so that would be the other thing I would say is um, I'd really encourage you to make sure that you are, um, yeah, serving in the church that you're, you've got community and that you're attending and that you are, you know, planted in because when you're, fully planted, yeah. you're actually going to grow. Yeah, it's great. You've got other things as well, and I'm sure I can jump in, but... Oh, no, um, totally. I those was, are my two initial I was just thoughts. thinking, like, it's it's awesome because I, I naturally just jump to the practicals. I'm like, yeah. what am I looking for practically? And I think, um, and what I love is it's like, this is where I think it is good to have um, both of these things, like looking at that and actually considering, am I actually planted here? I think is great. Um, and then the question for me then on that is like, well, what am I looking for to decide if I'm being planted? Because that's the first. That's right. The, that's yeah. the first thing I'm actually looking for before I serve in a team mm-hmm. uh, or serve in a church. I'm actually looking for: is this a church that I can call home? And yes. is this a church that um, God wants me to be in? And yes. what am I actually looking for for those things? So I think for me, I'm looking for um, I'm looking for the principles of the church, principally w- w- like what are the values. Uh, what are the doctrine principles that we're standing on? Mm. Uh, the the like the biblical biblically based principles that the church is founded on and operates Great. within. I'm also looking at the leaders. Like, are they leaders who uh, I feel like um, I could get behind? Awesome. Um, they have a vision that um, I see my life playing a part too. Because we've all got gifts and talents, and it's all to. Um, it's all ultimately to serve the Great Commission, which is to go and make disciples. And the local church is a huge part of that um, of that mission. So, mm. with that mission being the Great Commission, does the vision of the church serve that? And is that something that I can get behind yes. and rally in with? So, mm. what am I saying? I'm looking for leadership, and ultimately, in the leadership, you can see pretty quickly what the doctrines are of the church and what the principles are. Yeah. Um, because I would always look for principles over preferences every single time. Very good. I'm looking for the principles of a church, the principles of leadership over my own personal preferences of like, well, I like the music to be a little bit faster. I like yeah, there yeah. to be more lights. I like more Persian rugs. Well, that's <laughs> that is that's your personal preference. Yes. But it ha- you have to not align with personal preferences but align with kingdom principles. I love that. And that's that. dictated to by the leader of the church. Yeah, absolutely. And I think everyone's journey into uh, into church is really different. Like, I mean, you actually came in to um, the, our church originally. Our church yep. originally. Really new Christian, like just yeah. absolutely fresh and got involved straight away. Whereas I came in, the church was so different than what I'd known. Yeah. And, um, but I knew God had positioned me there and in there were so many preferences that didn't line up with what I had known, but I allowed God because the principles were there and because I knew he had placed me there to actually shift my heart and to mm. understand why the church did certain things. Yeah. And then I was actually able to understand, get on board and help um, multiply and build that thing. Yeah, but what great. came first was actually God positioned me, you know, Yeah. and he positioned both of us and he positions you in the church that you're in. But it is um, sometimes you actually just need to kind of lay down some of those preferences. <laughs> Totally, and I think once you've once you've identified those principles and you've identified which of your preferences you need to let go of, I think totally. that's the point where you go, yeah, I'm going to be planted here. Definitely. I think that's the point you go, yep, cool, I'm in. And then you can start going, okay, great. Well, what are the areas of this church that I can put my hands to, yeah. um, give my gifts towards? Uh, and you can start serving from there. And really, I think uh, in all of this, it's being open to the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. I think the reason why I probably am ruthless on preferences is because our preferences aren't often dictated to by the Holy Spirit. Often that's just mm. our wants, our desires. It's our fleshly it's stuff. It's our personal stuff that we're like, I I like this. But I think it's like, cool, well, I, I like being in this play. I, I, I like this style of music, for example, but I know God's calling me here. So, and this church doesn't have that. Cool. Well, I, I know that God's calling me here. He's He's leading me here. We use the word calling quite flippantly. I think He's leading me yes. here. He, he's He's. What did you say? He's ordering steps. Is that you, what I said? You used a P word. I Guiding. think. Guiding. Positioning. 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 I love that because we do get positioned as we make our moves. Mm. God positions us. So it's about being open and going. Cool. Well, what do you want me to do? And and once you're like, yep, this is this is it. Then you're in, and you can start serving at that point. 
And God will also open things up for you. I mean, you might be the greatest gift for the church that they've been praying for to actually open up something new in that ministry. Maybe they don't have a thriving preteens ministry. Well, maybe that's you. Maybe God's call. Maybe God's uh, positioned you in that church to be the answer. To be the answer. In fact, love that. I think most of the time God does that. Yeah. Something you said I wanted to draw out because I think it was really great was you said, um, "How can I serve this house?" And I think a lot of people can kind of approach. I'm looking Mm. for a church to serve in because I want to grow my gift. And the reality is, is that if you put your hand to the plow and you work to multiply and build a church, you will grow. Oh, but if totally. that is your primary 100%. goal, you're going to take from the church, yeah. which is actually not God's design. Our God's design is that we would build together, build alongside. 100%. So come with an attitude of how can I totally. serve? How can I give? And you will, as a byproduct, grow. But if you get it, get it the other way around, it's not going to be as effective. Yeah. So I just thought that was a really good cool no, thing. No, no. And said. I think we should just hover over that for a a little Mm. bit longer i think it's important to understand that like for us particularly um uh, millennial leaders gen z leaders i think we've been told a lot that we are so gifted so talented and the culture that we've lived in has made it about us made it about what we Mm. have to offer the world Mm. but i think the reality is is that in the kingdom of heaven it's not what I have to offer the world. It's what I have to offer back to Jesus. Like yes. he's put that in me to then offer back to him to serve others. And we've got to be careful that we don't make the church an opportunity for our gifts to come to the front. Yes. And it, it's not a place where I get to use my gifts. It's a place I get to lay my gifts down. Love that. And be like, cool. Oh, well, yep, I'm really good at that, but... I'm here, whatever, Mm. God, whatever your will is, Mm. Mm. and I'm surrendered to this leadership to go, cool, I'm surrendered here, I'm open, whatever you'd like me to do, I'm in. Um, And uh, and I think that's that's a cultural tension for us now Mm. that we have to be, we have to be careful of personally. Yeah. Um, Like it would be easy for, it would be easy for us, you know, if we hadn't got our next steps already sorted and we were on that journey of looking for a church and you know like if we were looking for that it would have been easy for me to go well where do my gifts get best used like where am i going to best grow where am i going to where where where's my opportunities going to come from you know what yeah. i mean like for you as a singer well which worship team is going to elevate me the best yeah. like Ugh. which church is going to look for albums next that i could play a part it's like but that's i think how young people come into not all of them i think some come some. in mm. um to these to churches going well i've got these gifts and talents so Use me, um, and mm, I think that that's. Mm. I think that that's uh, that can be that be, can be kind of wrong. Mm, I think mm. it is wrong, um, yeah. which uh, which is good. Okay, the last question, which we don't have a lot of time to answer, so um, uh, but let's do it anyway because we're here. Um, Love it. Third question: What's the number one thing that is essential in a kid's service? So uh, uh, let's say. Um, next gen service. Next gen service. What What do you think is the number one thing that's an essential for a next gen service? It, that's actually quite broad. Let's go. Let's start with uh, number one thing in children's and number one thing in youth because I think they're probably slightly different. Mm, mm. Well, I was going to say um, that it's a, a ministry, not a program. Great. So um, that we that we go after the Holy Spirit. Um, because, yeah. uh, you know, you can have all the fun games, you can have all the peppy messages, you can have great pizza and good hangout times and create great memories, which are all really, really great things, really super fantastic additions to a kid's service. But if you are not actually going after the Holy Spirit and for young people to encounter God for themselves, then you are just like a club. Totally. And you're actually not different. You're not set totally. apart than any other, totally. you know, youth you know, centre down the road or kids' holiday <laughs> yeah, yeah, program, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, Jumparama. That's what, yeah, Jumparama. <laughs> we love it. Um, you know, so we that's the one thing that we can offer that no one else can offer. The, totally. the, the house of God offers the Holy Spirit and an encounter with God. Yeah, it's good. I was going to say I, my, my thing was prioritising the presence. Yes, Because I, I think Same thing. even if you're having a games night, prioritize the presence mm, mm. And, and that's going to look different in different ways but if you have if you have nothing else but the presence that's mm. enough i think of the woman who had a little bit of jar uh, a little bit of jar a little bit of oil, <laughs> a bit of oil in she the just jar. had a little bit of jar, a little um, bit of jar. she had a little bit of oil in that jar and she said i have nothing 
but a little bit of olive oil. Mm. And I think that, I mean, obviously that was enough then for uh, the profit to take in and, um, mm. and multiply. Mm. Uh, and I think that's the key is like, whether I've got three kids, 300 kids um, in a room, like if we don't have those moments where the presence yes. of God is moving. And again, I'm not saying you've got to have, you know, like huge, um, ministry moments Alter where everybody's calls. on the floor yeah. and every single week. Like I, I, I think I love that gear. Like I'm all about it. But if you're asking me what the number one essential thing is, it's ensuring that you yourself as a leader are filled with the presence of God, that you yeah. are hungry for yeah. more of Jesus, that Jesus is central and that the presence of God is, is, uh, is thick. Yes. Um, and then everybody, every one of our teams are pursuing the same thing. Every yeah. team member is pursuing totally. the same thing. And we're giving um, our young people an opportunity to have those encounters, whether it's through great conversation, whether it's through um, like praise and worship, preaching, yeah. whatever it is, it's yeah. the presence of God. I love what you said, even if it's a games night, like if it's a youth games night, you still want the Holy Spirit there because you want totally. you want divine connections. You want people to have fun and, and be joyous. Yeah. If, it's a, if it's a movie night on a Sunday night for the kids and they're eating popcorn, bring the Holy Spirit into that room. Declare a spirit of peace. The Holy Spirit is actually fun and wants to be part of those things totally. as well. So um, every, every kind of gathering. Yeah. When two or more are gathered in my name, That's I am right. there among them. So um, I love that. It's it's the presence. Totally. And I think we've got to be careful that we don't overemphasize one moment for yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the presence of God to do his to do his thing versus another moment. Mm, I think mm. and then we've also in saying that got to be careful that we don't then devalue one moment <laughs> yeah. to overvalue another. Yeah. It's like from the minute a kid jumps on a bus or signs in to the foyer. Awesome. This is us now. The presence of God is, is now mm. working and mm. is now where the program has begun. Um, the, the night has begun. And if we can Love that. just ensure that 100% preaching, yes, we jump to preaching and altar calls as the bit where it's like, we need the presence of God in this moment. Yeah. But bro, like in the foyer after the service, like yeah. in, in, the, in that two minute connection time where you turn around and meet somebody new, divine, I love what you said, divine encounters, these, these, holy moments where the church is doing life together being the church being the church mm. it, it is the moments where we need the presence of god the most and i and i love that and i think it's i think it's incredibly powerful um and i think that would be the essential thing that we would say love it great questions great questions for this episode of the next gen podcast the fifth q a with hna thanks for joining us that is the end of our q a section thank you for joining us today this is going to be the last one it from has you to be right for a long time but Surely. Well, well at least for the next month anyway love it um, you need to find a friend that starts with a i've got a few all right well perfect absalom Oh, heck. Abimelech. Oh. Abraham. Oh, see, I went to the bad people, didn't I? Is it Abimelech? Abimelech. Abimelech. Did he Can't do bad remember. things? Can't have to have to look it up. Maybe that's what I'll do after this. There are lots of A names in the Bible. Aaron. Uh, I'm just going to Google it. Abimelech. You've got Absalom, Abimelech, uh, Abraham, Abram. Same thing, but, you know, another Ooh, A like name. Oh, uh, no, he was. He was an extremely... Amon. Conniving and evil person. He persuaded his mother's brothers to encourage the people of Shechem, Shechem. Shechem to back him in a plot to overthrow his family rule and make him the sole ruler. Yeah, look, not great. After slaying all but one of his 70 brothers. Yeah, that's was right. Crowned king. He was yeah, ruthless. That's not great. Genesis 21. Uh, is where you can find him. That's actually some great homework. If you'd like to uh, have a look at Abimelech, he's crazy. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, thanks. Be blessed. Anne Annalise, thank you very much, as always. Pleasure. Um, I love you very much. I think you're doing Aww. a great job with this pregnancy. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to having baby slayed at Earthside. Come on now. Very, very soon. If you want to keep up to date with all of what Annalise and I are up to, you can uh, check it out on social media. Um, on Instagram is where we're normally based, at Harry Slade NZ is mine, and at Annalise Slade is Annalise's. So you can uh, hit us up, follow us there, um, and keep up to date with us. You can also have a look at the website, harryslade.nz.com. That's harryslade.nz.com. We've got a whole bunch of information, including team trainings, preaching opportunities, uh, and a whole bunch more information on how you can connect with us if you'd like to. Obviously, no pressure. This is a free resource. We keep it free uh, because we want to bless the church, bless the body. Uh, we don't know everything, but we do know some things, and we hope that our something is your one thing uh, to bless you and to make you 
you better. That is it for now, though. Listen, every next-gen leader, be encouraged. Your story is changing history, leading the legacy, and changing the tide. So don't quit. Keep the grip, and we'll see you back here on the Next Gen Podcast very soon. Would you like to say anything as we depart? Keep the grip, people. <laughs> what? Can you say it louder? Keep the grip. <laughs> that was really lame. Did you like to say anything else? Mm, nah, I got nothing. Peace out, homies. <laughs> wow.